Reach for the speed, reach for the whistle, go where the rail may run. Reach for the words, reach for the story, follow the rainbow sun. To a shining time station, where dreams can come true, waiting there. ridiculous and foolishness. This new train schedule is Tommy Rot, Balderdash and Cookie. There isn't a train on earth that can go from Point Pokey to Cloggyville in 11 seconds. <sighs> it's 14 miles and look here from Doodle Town to Turley in 18 hours. Well, it's impossible. Why, I can walk from Doodle Town to Turley in 15 minutes and I'm only 18 inches tall. I'll just have to write the correct times in here. What are you doing? Stop that. Those are the new train schedules from the railroad company. I am the only one who can change those schedules. Well, it may be new, but it's not a train schedule. Give me that pencil. Never. You can't get from Buttertown to Chubby Corners in four seconds. What did you say? What? Four seconds? What? Ah, oh. you are Miss Stacy Jones. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, could you please direct me to the station master? I am the station master. May I help you? <laughs> oh, the station. <laughs> oh, uh, well, uh, Miss Station Master. Well, this certainly is a lovely train station you have here. Yes, a uh, very lovely indeed. <laughs> <laughs> but enough about you. Do you see those machines over there? They are all mine. The railroad has given me a long lease for the entire arcade starting today. And I'm thinking about putting in some more machines, some big, new, noisy, expensive, huge, heavy machines. Yes, I have some big plans. Very big plans. Uh, yes, but... And have you noticed the new schedules that I had printed up? You had those schedules printed up? Why, those schedules are all wrong. And if the schedules are wrong, the passengers will miss their trains. I know. So what? Who cares? It's fantastic. They miss their train, so they have nothing to do. Therefore, consequently so, they go to my arcade and spend their money in my machines. Oh, oh, you really are a schemer, aren't you? Well, that's what they call me, the schemer, and the pleasure is all mine. Uh, yes, well, Mr. Schemer. Oh, please, please. Schemer, my friends call me schemer. Yes, well, schemer, these schedules are worthless. They are worse than worthless. They are misleading. Now, what have you done with the real schedule? All right, take it easy, take a deep breath. Just an idea. It will hardly ever happen again. What a way to run a railroad. Yoo-hoo! Mr. Conductor! Yoo-hoo! Can I help you, sir? What's that, a silly face? <laughs> you want to go someplace silly? No, no. Sounds like silly. Uh, Billy, Krilly, Dilly, Dilly? D Dilly Lick! <laughs> okay, you gotta take the train to Shemp and change at Spotsville. Your uh, train will arrive in about a half an hour. Yoo hoo! Oh, Mr. Conductor! Yoo hoo! Mr. Hi, Conductor! Oh, hi. oh, hi, I'm Matt. You know our little friend who lives in the wall? Mr. Mm, I owe him an apology. I blamed him for changing the schedules, and he was only trying to correct them. Will you help me find him? Sure. Great. Yoo -hoo. Mr. Conductor? Here. What are you doing in there? I was looking for Mr. Conductor. You want to find a conductor, son? You wait out on the platform. There aren't any conductors in here, and certainly not in my drawer. 
Was there something else? No, no, I was just leaving. There's a door. Be careful now. Hi, Matt, where are you going? I, I was looking for someone. Come on and visit my grandpa's workshop. Maybe we can help him fix something. I don't think he wants me in his workshop. Oh, you're afraid of him? I'm not. Well, come on, let's go see him then. I think I'll look for Mr. Conductor instead. Who's Mr. Conductor? It's the little guy who lives in the wall. Oh, yeah. What is it? Like a goblin or an animal or something? No, he's a guy. Come on and help me find him. A guy? A little guy? Uh, no thanks. You can go look for him. Now who are you afraid? I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of anything. You are, too. Am not. Besides, you're afraid to visit my grandpa. Yeah, and you're afraid to meet Mr. Conductor. <laughs> there he is. Come on. Hello, Matthew, Math, Matthew. Hi. Mr. Conductor's been telling me all about train schedules on the island of Sodor. Did he tell you about Thomas or Gordon? No. What about Thomas or Gordon? Ah, let me see. That's a bit <laughs> You're absolutely right. I keep it to remind myself that one day, the railroad will give me a gold watch for all my years in service. That's what you get when you've been around as long as I have. But I always know what time it is. How? How? I just look at that big clock over there. <laughs> I have some time. I'll tell you a story about Henry the Big Green Engine. But I must warn you, it's a very sad story. Oh! Oh! Once, an engine attached to a train was afraid of a few drops of rain. It went into a tunnel and squeaked through its funnel and wouldn't come out again. The engine's name is Henry. His driver and fireman argued with him, but he would not move. The rain will spoil my lovely green paint and red stripes, he said. The conductor blew his whistle till he had no more breath and waved his flag till his arms ached. But Henry still stayed in the tunnel and blew steam at him. I'm not going to spoil my lovely green paint and red stripes for you. Then along came Sir Topham Hatt, the man in charge of all the engines on the island of Sodor. We will pull you out, said Sir Topham Hatt, but Henry only blew steam at him. Everyone pulled except Sir Topham Hatt, because, <coughs> he said, my doctor has forbidden me to pull. But still Henry stayed in the tunnel. Then they tried pushing from the other end. Sir Topham Hatt said, one, two, three, push! <laughs> But he didn't help. <coughs> My doctor has forbidden me to push, he said. They pushed and pushed and pushed, but still Henry stayed in the tunnel. At last, Thomas came along. The conductor waved his red flag and stopped him. Everyone argued with Henry. Look, it has stopped raining, they said. Yes, but it will begin again soon, said Henry. And what would become of my green paint with red stripes then? Thomas pushed and puffed and pushed as hard as ever he could. But still, Henry stayed in the tunnel. Eventually, even Sir Topham Hatt gave up. We shall take away your rails, he said, and leave you here until you're ready to come out of the tunnel. 
they took up the old rails and built a wall in front of Henry so that other engines wouldn't bump into him. All Henry could do was to watch the trains rushing through the other tunnel. He was very sad because he thought no one would ever see his lovely green paint with red stripes again. As time went on, Edward and Gordon would often pass by. Edward would say, peep, peep, hello. And Gordon would say, poop, 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 served you right. Poor Henry had no steam to answer. His fire had gone out. Sutton dirt from the tunnel had spoilt his lovely green paint and red stripes anyway. How long do you think Henry will stay in the tunnel before he overcomes his fear of the rain and then decides to journey out again? Hello there. Do you ever wear green with red stripes? What's going to happen? Does Henry ever get out of the tunnel? Whoops! At the risk of being terribly late, the story of Henry must unfortunately wait. I promise completing at our very next meeting, so shake and we'll make it a date. No, I mean shake! <laughs> Imagine being frightened of a few drops of rain. Or if you get wet, you can just dry off again. I guess everyone is afraid of something sometimes. Like the dark. Yeah. Big scary dog. Yeah, nightmares. But you know the best thing to do when you're afraid is to talk to someone you know about it. Oh, there's the mail train from Pelican Falls. I'll be right back. Let's go see the picture machine. There's flying saucers in there. They're not scary ones. Look. Children. Hello. Uh, what are your names? Uh, I'm Tanya. Matt. Matt and Tanya. Well, those are lovely names for people that have them. Schemer. Now, why aren't you children putting your money inside my lovely machine? I don't have any more money. No money? Hey, 
then what are you doing hanging around here? Come on, get out of here. Out, get a job, earn a living, grow up. Come on, get some hard-earned cash. Get out of here. O-U-T. <sighs> well, since there is no one around here, unfortunately, I'll have to spend my own nickel. Bon voyage, Mr. Jefferson. Nickel, baby. Hey, I'm keeping this one. I keep all the nickels for my private collection. Hey, what is going on here? Where is my song? Who yelled at us like that, Rex? I think it's the fellow who owns this joint, Tex. Thank you, Rex. You're welcome, Tex. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm getting seasick. Whoa. I am going to get my nickel back. Give him back his nickel. No, I found it. It's mine. Hey, there's like a very spooky dude looking in down here, and I am not totally thrilled. Lucky he can't see us. I don't care. I can see him. that I sent you, it'll be okay. Whoa, son. What's the big rush? I was just leaving. My Aunt Stacy sent me over with your book. Did you find that conductor you were looking for? Yes, sir. I'm glad he wasn't in my drawer here. The thought of a train conductor in my drawer makes me nervous. And I'm not the sort of man who gets nervous. Scared. Sure. Nervous. Nah. I had one of the biggest scares of my life when I was about your age. You see this engine here? I'll never forget the first time she rumbled into the station. The wheels look ten feet tall. You were scared of a train engine? At first I was. She let off a blast of steam that about scared the pants off me. Then, after a while, I got a chance to ride in her. She was mighty. And I got to blow the whistle, warning everybody we were passing through. I was hooked. I knew I'd be a railroad band from that moment on. Why don't you go in and join them? Because I was looking for you, Mr. Conductor. You promised you'd tell me what happened to Henry the Green Engine. You promised. Yes, I did, didn't I? And my motto is never to disappoint a child. You are a child, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> and you are a child, too? Yes. Very well. Back to our sad, sad story about Henry walled up in the tunnel. <laughs> Gordon always pulled the big express. He was proud of being the only engine strong enough to do so. It was full of important people, like Sir Topham Hatt, and Gordon was seeing how fast he could go. Hurry, 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 he said. Tickety-tock, 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 said the coaches. In a minute, Gordon would see the tunnel where Henry stood bricked up and lonely. Oh, dear, thought Henry. Why did I worry about rain spoiling my lovely coat of paint? I'd like to come out of the tunnel. But Henry didn't know how to ask. 
I'm going to poop poop at Henry, said Gordon. He was almost there when... And there was proud Gordon going slower and slower in a cloud of steam. His driver stopped the train. What has happened to me, asked Gordon. I feel so weak. You've burst your safety valve, said the driver. You can't pull the train anymore. Oh, dear, said Gordon. We were going so nicely, too. And look, there's Henry laughing at me. Everyone came to see Gordon. Huh, said Sir Totham Hatt. These big engines are always causing me trouble. Send for another engine at once. While the conductor went to find one, they uncoupled Gordon, who had enough puff to slink onto the siding out of the way. Edward was the only engine left. I'll come and try, he said. Huh, said Gordon. That's no use. Edward can't push the train. Kind Edward puffed and pushed and pushed and puffed, but he couldn't move the heavy coaches. I told you so, said Gordon. Why not let Henry try? Yes, said Sir Topham Hatt. I will. Will you help pull this train, Henry? He asked. <laughs> oh, yes, said Henry. When Henry had got up steam, he puffed out. He was dirty and covered with cobwebs. Oh, I am stiff, I am stiff, he groaned. Have a run to ease your joints and find a turntable, said Sir Topham Hatt. When Henry came back, he felt much better. Then they coupled him up. Peep, peep, said Edward, I'm ready. Peep, 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 said Henry, so am I. Pull hard, we'll do it. Pull hard, we'll do it. They puffed together. We've done it together. We've done it together, said Edward and Henry. You've done it, hooray! You've done it, hooray! sang the coaches. Everyone was excited. Sir Topham had leaned out of the window to wave at Edward and Henry. But the train was going so fast that his hat blew off into a field where a goat ate it for tea. They never stopped till they came to the station at the end of the line. The passengers all said, thank you, and Sir Topham Hatt promised Henry a new coat of paint. On their way home, Edward and Henry helped Gordon back to the shed. All three engines are now great friends. Henry doesn't mind the rain now. He knows that the best way to keep his paint nice is not to run into tunnels, but to ask his driver to rub him down when the day's work is over. Are you two becoming great friends? Good. Now you can get each other out of a jam when you need to. Oh, time to be traveling again. Bye. <laughs> I want my money back, so I'm going to take this machine apart piece by piece. Then I will get my nickel back. Look, man, will you give him back his nickel so he'll finally leave us alone? Oh, no, all right, baby. Goodbye, my almost mint condition nickel. Till we meet again. <laughs> At least I got my nickel back. This place is very strange. My own machines trying to swipe my own money. Hm. You know, I am not so sure I want to bring my big, noisy, new, expensive, heavy machines in here. Oh? Because I'm not so sure that this place is good enough for them. I mean, 
My own machines will not even play for me. Oh, hi! You're back. Your train to Dilly Lick will be here any minute now. It's right on time, according to schedule. Oh! <laughs> uh, I think I'm getting out of here. Everybody in this place is crazy. for something special. Let's make music. Toe tapping, finger snapping. Happy time music. A one, a two, a three. Camp Town ladies sing this song. To da, to da. The Camp Town racetrack five miles long. Reach for the speed, reach for the whistle, go where the rail may run. Reach for the words, reach for the story, follow the rainbow sun. To a shining time station, where dreams can come true, waiting there for you. So much to see. So far to travel, so much to learn to know. Friends by your side, hopes to hold on to. Who knows how far you'll go? To a shining time station, where dreams can come true. Your own imagination waiting there for you. 